Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I've got Board Game 613 here. Some of you may know him, some may not, but he has created a massive fan-made expansion for Gloomhaven. I'm really excited to have him here. We're going to talk about a lot of cool stuff, how we got into it, how much time it took, and we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of how you make this a reality, how you actually get this onto the table and play it, and when it's actually going to be fully released. So starting right here, we're going to talk to Mr. Board Game 613. So why don't you start out by just telling us how this came about? Sure, absolutely. Um, so it started off as a much smaller expansion project uh, about 10 months ago. Uh, some of the classes in the works were in development for longer um, by some of the other people who contributed to class, namely Descent, Quasi-Local, and Disciple. They're all great guys. Um, but it started off with classes, then I went on to scenarios, and before you knew it, events, and it turned into this whole project. Um, at a certain point, I brought on Nick Sims. He created the story for the campaign, incredible story writer, and it just evolved from there. Nice. T tell us about the background. We got to start with the background, actually. Sure. Um, really, I got into creating content because I love Gloomhaven. You know, as soon as I picked it up, I played through the campaign with my wife. Um, I like creating things. I'm a creative kind of guy. So Gloomhaven gave me the platform that I wanted to uh, use to interact with the community and really create my own world within the incredible world of Gloomhaven. So combined the fact that I, I like creating content, I like playing Gloomhaven, put them together, and there you go. You have Crimson Scales. Nice. And how about your actual green screen background? Let's talk about that. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is the artwork. It's going to be going on the box art for uh, Crimson Scalves. Um, the artist, Alexander Elikov, he created it, and we'll get to that soon. But uh, it really captures the whole essence of the expansion right there. Right. So fan-made expansion, but actual original Gloomhaven artist. Yeah, absolutely. Right. The same Legendary. artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. So to, yeah, really, really neat stuff. Okay, so let's talk about what's in it. Tell us, you know, how many glasses of cards, road events, all that good stuff. Yeah, sure. So there's 11 unique classes. Each one has their own miniature. Um, some of them were created by the people I mentioned before. The other ones are created by me. But the good thing about Crimson Scales is you can play with any of the 11 classes or you can import original Gloomhaven classes or other custom classes. So it's really adaptable. Um, there's around 65 scenarios in the campaign, including the side and event unlock scenarios, and each class has their own solo scenario. Um, there's very few lockouts in the campaign, so that way people can enjoy the bulk of the content without having to worry about picking a particular path and then locking themselves out of a bunch of scenarios. Uh, there's around 60 new items, and none of them are added via the prosperity system. They're all rewards from scenarios, chests, classes. So it really adds that excitement to the game um, to unlock all those new items. And awesome. then with events, yeah, there's uh, over 100 events between the road and city events. Uh, there's a starting event deck. Um, each class has their own unlock and retirement events. And then there's different points where you add more events. So there's, uh, in addition to that, Sapphire, he, uh, the group that writes for Cellafair, and they made their own extended battle goals. Uh, I spoke to them, and we're going to be including those in the, in the release as well for people who want more battle goals. So really, it covers all facets of more Gloomhaven in all areas. Yeah, I think that's what people love about Gloomhaven, right? It's one of the things they love. I mean, there's quite a bit to love, but it's that mystery that, you know, pushing you to play more and more, to unlock things, to see that new cool stuff. Okay, so how long did this all take you? How long have you been working on it? So I've been, the, the bulk of the project has been 10 months of a lot of hard work. You know, it's, it's become part of a part-time job, so to speak, with the amount of hours I'm putting in, but I enjoy every minute of it. Uh, some of the classes were being in developed for longer, but otherwise it's just nonstop creating, play testing, developing, and formatting. Right. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about how they get this to the table and then 
we'll talk about release date after that. So starting off with you need the base. Sorry, you need the Gloomhaven base game, right? Yeah, it's an expansion. Um, so you just need base Gloomhaven. You don't need to have completed the entire Gloomhaven to play it. But I would imagine anyone who's going to a game expansion would have played enough so that they're familiar um, with the gameplay so they can add it on. Yeah. Right. Okay. Will there be a database where players can access the materials? Absolutely. Yes. Everything um, on the table t- tabletop simulator side will be in one neat mod. Um, when it comes to materials for physical components, I'll have links to everything in a Google Drive folder. So players can download the cards with bleed, the scenario book, 3D miniature files. And the guy named Any Two Cards, he made the Gloomhaven card viewer extensions on Chrome and Firefox. He's going to create a database online with each individual file too. Right. So maybe let's go through the steps. How do I get this to my table? Like I want to do this. What am I going to do? Okay, so when it comes to getting the materials, there's two ways. One is ordering from an online print shop. The second is downloading and printing the files yourself, either at home or a local print shop. For the online print shop, we're hoping that we can connect with the Game Crafter, which is a one-stop shop, order everything from there. Um, But that will require Cephalofair's comment. Um, Until that point, there's a few different places to order things. Shapeways is a 3D printing service that you can go and they have all the miniatures on there. Um, they're as little as 5 to $6 a piece, depending on the material size. Printer Studio is a place where you can order all the cards, abilities, events, items, personal quests, perk modifiers. And I'm ironing out the options for cost-efficient printing of the scenario books in the box. Um, but everything for the online print shop is going to be set up where you don't have to upload the files yourself. You just go onto the page and click an order. Uh, This is a not-for-profit project, so everything that's going to be on online print shops will be at 0% markup. Um, When it comes to printing at home, I'll have all the files in an instructional guide. I'm going to be condensing everything to save on paper, um, and I'll be giving instructions on how to print it, whether it's at home or instructions to give to the print shop, um, so that way you can get all the materials yourself. Very nice. Okay, so there's going to be a website. Yes. Yeah. Um, The new website, www.thecrimsonscales.com. It's going to have everything on there. It's going to where I'm going to be posting updates. Um, There'll be links to the materials. You can read up more on the project. It's going to be an all-in-one place uh, for everything about the expansion. Right. So everyone, I'll put a link down in the description. Make sure you go there. Make sure you check it out and make sure you're keeping up to date with the progress. So at this point, what is the release date going to be for Tabletop Simulator and then for the actual print material stuff, the official release dates? Sure, so the release date that we're looking at for Tabletop Simulator is the end of next month, end of May. Um, When it comes to physical components, we're looking within the few weeks after that. The reason that that release date is a little bit after the Tabletop Simulator launch is just because the amount of formatting there is to do to get it to print shops, to get it to the print and play files, um, plus all the we need to do the test orders um, to make sure that everything prints out right. Right. Okay. So yeah, make sure that you check that link in the description and that you're you know following along everybody so that you know right away when you can sink your teeth into this. So we talked about how this is not for profit and Isaac Childress, the creator of Gloomhaven, has released all of the assets to the public. And as long as you don't make money, you're allowed to go ahead and create content. So does he know about this? Have you talked to him? Tell us about that part. So Isaac has not officially commented on this particular project, um, but I have been in touch with him in the past. About 10 months ago when I started, um, I interviewed him about how to make good content. And he really helped guide me. Um, He's very supportive of the community and giving everyone what they need to help make their own content. And he told me that that was one of his goals with Gloomhaven to to create a world where people can make their own universe within. So yeah, he's been great. Although he hasn't commented on the Crimson Scale specifically, he's very supportive. Yeah, I mean, and that is what is making Gloomhaven even greater than you know, originally, right, is 
everybody just pitching in and doing custom scenarios and all the custom classes and stuff like that. So just briefly, how did you get the miniatures done? So a few of the miniatures were created by a um, sculptor named Kevikev, but the bulk of them were contracted by Epic Adventure Miniatures. Uh, he really worked hard to go, to dive in and make sure that all the details of every little piece of the miniature were were perfect. Um, the miniatures that come with base Gloomhaven were produced as cheaply as possible because you know Gloomhaven's a big game and you need to make it as affordable as possible. But because of that, the miniatures were tooled in very shallow molds and they're more flat, whereas these sculpts um, are going to be of much higher quality. Um, I commissioned an expert miniature painter named Wilting Moon. He's posted before. Um, he's going to paint the whole set, and I'm going to be showcasing that prior to launch, which will cool. really help show the, the quality and the vibrancy of the minis. Nice. Awesome. That's great. Okay, so um, are the scenarios like original Gloomhaven? Are they in a book, or are they like forgotten circles where, you know, there's some hidden information? So the scenario book is formatted similar to the base game. Um, you have to use the existing map tiles. So as long as you have base Gloomhaven, you should have everything you need. Um, so in terms of how it's formatted, it'll be familiar to those with base Gloomhaven. Okay. Awesome. So anything else you'd like to talk about? Yeah, I'll just add uh, another dimension um, is custom monsters. Uh, there is a flagship monster that Alexander also created the artwork for, named the Water Spirit. Um, but for the rest of them, for accessibility purposes, um, they're going to use the same standees and stat sheets as the original monsters, but they have all new monster ability decks. So, uh, for example, some of them will inflict a, a new custom condition. Uh, so I took the Forest Imp, I gave it a new ability deck, it's now the Toxic Imp, and it can inflict an ability called Infect. So it really, uh, some of the scenarios, it changes the gameplay just by having those new monster decks. Oh, very, very cool. Yeah, no, that's great to hear. So I just want to say, you know, thank you. I mean, I think it's an amazing thing you've done here. It's a very impressive endeavor. The scope, the scale, the attention to detail, all of that. I mean, it's very, very impressive. And I, you know, just based upon the response I've seen in the community, I think that sentiment is shared. So thank you. And we're all really looking forward to it. Great. Yeah. And then things can go out. There's a guy named Testum. He's been making sure that everything looks as professional as possible. So that way we can deliver a project that feels official and feels like the materials that everyone's used to playing and enjoying. So thank you for the opportunity to showcase this. And I really look forward to putting this out to the community soon. Yeah, thanks for doing this interview. And everybody out there watching, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And, you know, I am so excited for this custom content to come out.